Good morning. We are so glad to see you in God's house today. We've come to give him some, some praise and worship, and we appreciate you being here and being a part of it. So I'm going to ask, if you would, that we stand together as we praise him with the great song, To God Be the Glory. So would you stand as we worship him together, please? opportunity to worship in freedom. Lord, lead us in our service today as we come and celebrate the accomplishments of many in our church. We thank you for their efforts. We thank you for the work they've put in. And today we celebrate their work. And we celebrate you the most, Father. Lead us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take a moment to fellowship with those around you. No touching. No touching. Just... <laughs> Is in you, Lord, my 
where our peace and our strength comes from today. We do want to take this moment now and go before our Lord in prayer. Because I know there are many requests that we have that maybe we've not shared out loud that are in our hearts. And so I want you to take this opportunity, if you've not done so already today, just to take a moment and have a word of prayer with the Lord. So church, let's pray. Father, here we are again in this moment thanking you that we've been given this time together. That we're able to come and gather in this place and just worship and praise your holy name. Lord, in the midst of our coming before you, we first of all want to stop and just give you praise for your grace and for your mercy. And for forgiveness. For your word assures us that whenever we come before you with a repentant heart and we confess our sins over to you, Lord, that you remove the burden of that sin from us as far as the east is from the west. So, Lord, in this time of worship, of fellowship, and of celebration, we ask, God, that you just be present with us today and that we can feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit moving in and around us today as we gather as children of God here in this place. Father, we just want to give you praise for your faithfulness even sometimes when we're not so. But we are ever thankful that your grace and mercy is ever sufficient in all that we need. So continue, Lord, to lead us in our time together as we praise your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name, we come before your throne. Amen. What a wonderful change it has been for us as Christians when Jesus comes into our heart. This is our normal offertory time, so as you noticed when you came in the doors, there are baskets at all the doors. Feel free to drop your tithes and offerings in those baskets as you leave if you've not already done so. But let's stand together and give him praise and celebrate what it means to have Jesus in our hearts. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrong since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Jesus came into my 
scripture with you today before we have our time of scholarship recipients and recognizing our graduates. It's a scripture that we're all familiar with. It comes from Psalms 119, 105. And the reason I always like to share this with our graduates is because it's always a lot of what if, what's next, what's the next opportunity. And so as we have shared with you, we always like to give Bibles, especially to our high school graduates every year, just as a reminder of how important this next step is in their life. Because we want them to make sure that they take the Word of God with them, that they use the Word of God as their instruction, as their roadmap to the process of making decisions as they continue to do whatever it is that they're going to do next. And the psalmist writes in 119.105, these very familiar words, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's a reflection of knowing where we are as the light shines on our feet, of reflecting on who we are, where we are in life at this time. But it's also that reflecting light that goes out into the path before us. And when we walk with the Lord and we have the opportunity to serve and to follow him, he gives us that light. That shows us where we are. It sort of reflects our situation. It reminds us he's there with us in the present. But he also has that gleam of light on the path that's set before us. And so for all of our graduates today and for all of our scholarship recipients, we want to say to you as a, as a church, we are super excited about what God is doing in your life. And we are excited that God is, is being, and we're hoping and praying that you're allowing God to be a part of every part of the process as you begin to make these plans. And so we're going to continue to worship and praise him now, but in just a few moments I'm going to ask that uh, we're going to recognize our graduates from high school first and then our college graduates. And so as we do so, when we call your name, we're going to ask that you come to this microphone and just, what's next? What's next is all we're asking. Uh, share that and then the church wants to provide a gift for you and thank you for your appreciation So we'll do that in just a moment, but first I want us to give God some praise You keep your seats, but make sure you lift your voices toward the Lord The Lord leads us in all kinds of ways if we're open to the power of the leadership of the Holy Spirit And one of the things we have to learn to do is to rest, relax, and wait patiently on the Lord And this song will lead us in that as the deer so Praise Him together
So thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this moment. Lead us as we continue in Jesus' name. Amen. So what words do you give to graduates who are taking that next step in life? Well, just what we've been saying all morning, God's grace is enough. So hear these words. Let them inspire you this morning. of our, our young folks in our church and maybe our not so young folks as they've had the opportunity to, to go back and to try to better themselves in life. And so we always like to take this opportunity to share. And so first of all, we're going to ask if we can recognize our scholarship recipients. And so several of them have let me know this morning that for different reasons they couldn't be here either work or illness. But those of us, and of course, we recognized Jane last week before she took off on her trip and they've made it safely to Yellowstone. So parents are pleased, right? And very excited. But we do want to recognize uh, some of our other graduates. Spencer is under the weather this morning, so he is not with us. But I know Savannah's here, and so we want to ask Savannah if she'll come up with us, please, and we will recognize her.
So you come to this microphone right here. Just tell us what's next. I will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall to study environmental science. Imagine that, Virginia Tech. Who knew, right? <laughs> I don't see Nicholas here yet, so. All right. We also want to thank our, our college grads. So I'm going to ask Donna if she'll come. Um, for those of us who have done a lot of this, uh, going back to school as adults, we know how difficult this can be. Um, but we always want to celebrate. So I'm going to ask Donna if she'll come now. And she has received her program certificate in accounting. Is that correct? And from Rapid Community College. Donna, come. Get into our other graduates. I'm going to ask Shane if he'll come. Those are our college graduates now. He is graduating. I got money left. <laughs> I will continue my education to get my bachelor's in criminal justice and forensic science. Thank you very much. Let's see. I don't see Mary here, but Mary Degger, of course, graduated also from RCC with her nursing degree. All right. Lizzie Swan had to work this morning, but we want to recognize her. She graduated from Liberty uh, and is going back to get her master's and has a job, I think she was telling us, in Richmond uh, starting at the end of the month. And so we congratulate to her as well. All right. I'm going to ask, I don't see Macy, but I see Macy's entourage. So I'm going to ask one of her family members to come. And she has graduated also with her master's. <laughs> come on, bro. She's your sister. She's highly employed. That's what you know, right? Macy is teaching second grade, I believe. <laughs> All right, Kelly Ramsey. Ask Kelly to come up. <clears throat> she also has graduated her master's. And what's next? I'll be teaching fourth grade at Lancaster. Dave Kimball. Ask Dave if he could join us, please. least one class, I'm going to pursue a doctoral degree from Liberty. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for that, and we just want you to know that we're praying for each one of you as you begin to make these uh, next decisions and steps in your life. All right, so I'm going to ask our scholarship folks if they'll come now. No? Same thing, we'll ask the scholarship recipients to come over to this side, okay? All right. Good morning. Um, this year we're gonna give a little life lessons because we had the easiest application. There it is, come on, all you have to do is write your name, address, telephone number, and your GPA. So we're just gonna put a little motherhood into it of life lessons. Um, 2000 was the year. Um, 2001 is 2021 is still teaching us um, who would have ever thought that the subway workers would be out directing traffic so that people could get gas um, we will be in a real shocker if the electricity you know if they take ransom on that then we will be learning different things but everyone's been adapt to it and we're just learning and going along but the first of the life lessons we're going to talk about is church family um, as everyone goes out you know we some will stay in the northern X some will not but you need a church family because if anything, if 2020 did not teach us, 
Think how it was being home all the time. And also when you get with a different group and you're not in with Christians, your thinking does change. I mean, just you're not as focused of doing the right thing and um, thinking the right way. So as you go off in life, you need to get that church family through college. It might not be the fun thing to do to get up on a Sunday morning after, you know, you've had your fun night, Saturday night. But get with that group of people that will keep your um, thinking the right way. Um, you know, in the past 20 years, I've seen just the pendulum, the pendulum has completely swung where everything's acceptable and everything's not acceptable. As Christians, it's not acceptable the way that society says it is. So we need to get back to the Bible and with the church Bibles that were given, you need to look at them and you need to follow that. Um, and you don't have to live and find everything acceptable and go along with what society says that everything's okay. But get back to the Bible that Cohn gave you, and that's if you are doing what the Bible says, you will be living the correct life, and you'll not be having to look over your shoulder, and things will go in the straight line for you. And, you know, I've learned it for myself, and I see it with others. When you're not going along with what the Bible says, that's when your life starts going astray, and that's when you start having problems. So get back to what the Bible says and pray, and life will start align, align again for you. Be kind to others. Um, as a society, I've noticed that, you know, it's not just with the young ones. Just society, people have gotten to be rude and, you know, say what you want and do what you want. And everybody can, it's acceptable, but it's not. You need to get back to being kind to people and being humble for what you have. Because you don't know, if somebody's nasty, just don't be nasty back. You don't know what that person's going through. So, um... Just don't be that way. Nice will get you so much farther in life by just not going along with society. And, you know, especially now with the Internet, it's gotten so easy for people just to say what they want and put things out there. But that's not always the best way to be. Um, number three, dreams. Go for them. Dream high. I mean, nobody, if any of us look 20 years ago, people, people like ask my kids, what do you want to do? They don't know what they want to do. Um, I mean, just dream for what you want to do that makes you happy. I had somebody tell one of my kids this week, you know, you need to go in a job that you can move up in. And, you know, I thought about that later. Some, some people, that's, that's the right thing for. Some people belong in management and some people are very skilled at it. But sometimes working your way up just to be CEO, that's not the right thing. That's, you know, you get money, you get more problems sometimes. You know, if you have people, when you, when you come home, nobody cares of your title. You need to do what makes you happy in life. What, um, now I'm not saying go dramatic and then the parents are saying, well, she said go, you know, live your dreams. Cause I had one two weeks ago that said, hey mom, I want a money for a application fee to Florida. I was like, what? Where did Florida come from? And well, it's warm and you know, it's, it'd be a great place to go to college. I was like, and thank goodness my mother walked in and she just, have you lost your mind? That's another 25,000. You go and you go to college in a state school and then when you go get that degree, if you wanna go down to Florida, you go to Florida. So, so just, but live your dreams to make yourself happy. Do jobs that make you happy in life and do what you wanna do. And it doesn't always have to have the title behind it if you're happy. Another life lesson is money. Um, young lady I was talking to, she turned 24 yesterday, and it, you know, I got thinking about it quite a bit over the weekend. She said, money. She said, my biggest regret in life is money. And I was like, what in the world? This child is 24. She's making a good salary, benefits. What in the world is she so worried with money? And when she told me her dad, I was like, oh my gosh, that is awful. She said, you know, for years, she said when she was in college and, you know, starting out into adulthood, she said, I just would go out with everybody else. I'd go to restaurants, socialite, just had a great time. And she said, I never saved. She said, if I had just saved even partially and not done some of the things, just impulse, you know, it looks good on Facebook. You're doing different things. Um, and at the end of the day, just, just think about that a little bit with money. Just save some. Um, you know, I have a 2010 car and I like my car and it makes a loud noise. So if I have children or I have seniors in the back, if this alarm will go off in the lock or the lock and it just goes Arr! and everybody just kind of jumps when they're jumping in it. And people will look at me, don't you want something better? And I'm like, why? It runs, it works, it gets me where I need to go. You know, what, who cares? So, but you know, it's society, it's just, we want more, you do more. And at the end of the day, you've still got to take care of what you have. 
So you don't need to be worried so much about materialistic things. And as young, you know, because, I mean, I see it with my own. You, you want those materialistic things. You want the fun items that everybody else has. But, you know, 10 years isn't really going to matter. So just, just think about that a little bit. Um, just bottom line is get that cone Bible out. You're going to make mistakes. I mean, we, we all make mistakes every single day. And we're going to make mistakes. Y'all are young. That's the joy of being young. You can make mistakes. Say, oh, I was young and dumb. But, um, you know, just live by the Bible and just do the right thing. Come back to your church family. If you move away from here, get with a church family that works for you. And it will work out for you. Um, so that's what we have to say with um, just have some life lessons. Just live the right way. Um, this year, uh, we have quite a few scholarships to give out. But also... Um, Mr. and Ms. Kohler, they have this um, Kohler Scholarship, and I think everybody remembers Ms. Kohler, well, if you were here a few years ago, being very strict with um, what the guidelines were in regards to church attendance, being active, um, the GPA, and um, so being good stewards of her um, funds, we did not um, determine to have a Kohler um, Scholarship this year. Um, I would like to recognize her family is here today, and if y'all don't mind, if I can put y'all right on the spot, I think I'm looking at the right family, am I not? <laughs> if you know, right here, okay, I'm looking at this family, I'm like, no, that's not us. Um, could y'all just stand up? I would like to recognize the Polar um, family who is here today. And you know, Mr. and Ms. Polar were big with the scholarships, and they believed in education, and they believed in working hard. Um, to get somewhere in life, and they really supported the, um, the scholarship fund, and we're very um, glad that their legacy is continuing after quite a few years now um, to be able to give that um, scholarship. So um, this year, we do have um, scholarships in the amount of $500. Um, I'm going to call the names. If you've not said what you're going to do, if you could just stop at the mic and tell us what you're going to do. Should we get any staff here, or...? We're going to do a group picture afterwards. Okay. Okay, so we'll get you, just because of COVID, um, get you just to say what you're going to do, and then sit back down, and then we'll get a group picture. All right, the first recipient is going to be Spencer, and I know I'm going to say your last name so wrong. Watch out. And he is not here. He is under the weather. Um, the next recipient, we're going to get Mama to come up, and for, I think, both the girls, Autumn and Trinity Taylor. And if you could tell what both of your girls are doing now, that would be wonderful. Um, Trinity is pursuing a degree at James Madison University in Health Sciences and hopes to go to graduate school to be a physical assistant. And Autumn is pursuing a degree at Old Dominion University in Marine Biology. I don't see, this is one of my favorite Spitfire kids when we would do the mission trips. That girl could get up there with a hammer. I don't see, she is here. Where's my Spitfire? Lexi, what are you seeing? You're right here. See how I'm saying good things about you. This is one of my favorite kids on the trip, how she could just get out there with that hammer and show those boys. Lexi Rock. Um, I'm studying elementary education at Old Dominion University. Haley Headley. Is she here? No? Okay. Christian Headley. Morgan Wilson. I'll be graduating seeing you in the school <coughs> and with a bachelor's in business management and a minor in leadership. <coughs> Mackenzie Kent. We know where she is on, and what a blessing for Jenna Bramlett and the two girls to be able to go all the way. They left last weekend, 
last weekend, Memorial Day weekend, go out, drive off all the way to Niagara Falls and make it all the way across country, no flat pen, no flat tires, no fender benders, I mean really, no broken down cars, and they got there and they had an amazing time. So Jenna Bramlett. Jenna continues to go to VCU and um, will graduate next year in the interior design program. Brantley Swift. Savannah Harris. Mm -hmm. Amaya Ball. I see her here today. Now, Zach, you better know what you're doing. So come on up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Zachary Swift. physiology major at the University of Lynchburg in pursuit of doctorate of physical therapy. Now one of my favorite individuals that I love to have conversations with is David Kimball. Come on up. <laughs> Bartlett and I do know that um, Sylvia's you know it's really sad with you know it's just time and she's um, been undergoing some considerable some health issues but she is the one that had the dream of this and um, started this for everyone so the way this keeps going is by donations so um, just remember that too the next time you have a little extra money you want to put in scholarship fund um, we would you know that's what keeps this so we can continue to give the $500 um, every year all right thank you and we do truly appreciate all the offerings that are given towards the scholarship fund. Uh, that's been one of the greatest outreaches that we've been able to do, at least at the time that we've been here, because it's such the lives of so many kids. And, and as they become adults, it's nice to hear them say positive words about how uh, their church family back home helped support them and, and help them through these decisions and processes in life as they take these next steps. So you're a part of that process. You have invested in these young people, and we thank you for your contributions uh, each and every time that you do that. And so we're going to ask all of our graduates and scholarship recipients to stay in here after the service because uh, we do want to get a group shot. We'll space out as much as we can, but we do want to get a group picture of you, um, and thank you for all of your efforts. And church, just thank you. Thank you for being a part of these young people's lives. Uh, many of us in this room can stop and think. Um, I've been a part of a lot of churches in my lifetime over the years, and four different states and in different places, but there were certain churches that always sort of plugged me in and always made me feel like uh, I was a part of them, even when I wasn't there any longer. And I still hear from some of those churches. And it, it's just, it's amazing what it's like to know that you all have invested in the lives of these young people, and they will never forget that. They'll be part of their journey. And so thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for encouraging them in their role of faith, because one of the scariest statistics that Barna has put out most recently is the dramatic fall away from faith that people experience when they leave the confines of, of home. And so we want to encourage them in the best ways that we can to, to remember their faith and to claim it. And you know, I know we have to go through growing processes. We get all that. But uh, we pray that the scripture teaches us that you know, we raise them right in the ways of the Lord. 
And when and the key to that verse is, it says, when they are old, they will not depart from it. When they're teenagers in their early 20s, we know what life's like, right? We get, we get sidetracked, we have to learn some lessons, and so that's part of it. But thank you for investing in the lives of our young people, and I pray that you continue to do just that. Let's stand as we close out our service today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Let this be your marching orders uh, for this week. That as you leave this place today and we talk about God's word being a light into our feet and a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. I pray that that is true for you this week. That God will light your path and that you will follow as we have the opportunity to serve him. Wherever he leads, I'll go. about dates we're still kind of forming that and working around that but the information is on the table if you want to take a look at the theme and that sort of thing thank you also thank you for reminding me we have two of our scholarship recipients we forgot to mention this earlier that are recipients of the virginia baptist scholarship which you are also a part of through your tithes and offerings to the virginia baptist morgan i believe you have received it this year again right this is the second time that's awesome and uh, a short guy in the back zach i think you were the other guy that got it right that's right so we could yeah Jenny got it. Thank you. Rick, we had three. Uh, so they, didn't, they didn't send us a note, so we didn't know who got it, but we knew that we had some scholarship recipients. So they're part of the Virginia Baptist when you give your tithes and offerings to the church, and we contribute some of that to the Virginia Baptist. So they have also uh, been great recipients of those scholarships. So thank you again. Pray God blesses you this week, and I know he will. Look for his blessings in all the things that you encounter, and look for his blessings uh, in the people that you encounter this week, and then do your best to be a blessing to someone else. Would you please? Gracious and almighty God, we are so very, very thankful that you have given us this time to come and to gather, to worship, and to celebrate these accomplishments. Lord, we, we recognize today that whenever we accomplish something in life, it's because you allow us to do so. It's because you motivate us to do so. It's because the opportunities have been provided for us. And for that, we thank you. Help us as a congregation, as a fellowship of believers, to continue to support our young people as they go through this process of making decisions to, to uh, advance their lives and to uh, do whatever it is that you're leading them to do in the coming days. Thank you that we get to be a part of this beginning process as we encourage them and send them on their way. Lead us now, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. For it is in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray these things. And all of God's people said... Amen. God bless and thank you so much for being with us today. Please allow the deacons to dismiss you by row. For scholarship recipients, please stay around.